Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ayan. In this video, we are going to talk about the anatomy of uh, the urinary system of the dog. So we will dissect the kidney, the urinary bladder, and the related structure. So let's get started. We removed most of the organs uh, um, from the abdominal cavity and we kept uh, the kidneys. Let's talk about the kidneys. The, the kidneys are located uh, doors and inside the abdominal cavity, uh, retroperitoneally. That means they are covered with the peritoneum just ventrally here. So the peritoneum covers just the ventral surface of the kidneys and they are located outside the peritoneal sac. And that's why we will name the location as retroperitoneal location. Okay, as you can see, in general, before we talk about uh, the kidneys, the, the, if you look at the kidney here, uh, each kidney has a lateral border and the medial border, or uh, where we have the helos, renal helos here. So lateral border, medial border, cranial extremity, caudal extremity, parietal surface, and visceral surface. Okay, good. If you look exactly, you will find that the right kidney is located a little bit cranially uh, to the uh, left kidney, so they are not at the same level. And that's why, so we, what we, 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 we have to mention here that the right kidney is located cranially, and uh, that's why we have a direct connection here with the uh, caudate process of the liver. And that's why we have, you know, here what's called the uh, uh, renal impression, you know, on the caudate process. And here between the right kidney and the caudate process, we have, uh, as we mentioned before, what's called the hepatorenal ligament. It's not the case here for, to, regarding the left kidney. The kidney is located, each of them is located inside what's called the adipose capsule. The adipose capsule from the name is the capsule surrounding the kidney and has a lot of fat. So if we cut here through the adipose capsule, yeah, there, there are fat inside the adipose capsule. So the kidney is located inside the adipose capsule. And after removing the adipose capsule, we can also uh, cut through what's called the fibrous, fibrous capsule, fibrous capsule. So this one here is the fibrous capsule. That means the kidney, look, it's a fibrous sac, like, okay, like this. So the kidney, each kidney is located inside or surrounds by two capsules, you know. The adipose capsule, which we remove firstly, like here, and after that we have the fibrous capsule, like this. This is the fibrous capsule. Look. This is all the fibrous capsule. Yeah, the same if we go to this one here, the adipose capsule, the outside capsule with, with a lot of fat and the adipose capsule, uh, uh, the fibrous, the adipose capsule, that capsule with a lot of fat, the fibrous capsule cover the kidney directly. Um, now, um, uh, with regards to the blood supply, the renal arteries come uh, directly from the abdominal aorta. As you can see here, we have the right uh, renal artery and to the left kidney we have the left uh, renal artery this is the left renal artery directly from the abdominal aorta the blood will be collected from the kidneys and go through what's called the renal vein here and there yeah this is the left this is the right uh, directly to the caudal vena cava directly to the caudal vena cava again this is the renal arteries and here we have uh, I just cut it here the renal veins the renal veins uh, in front, in front or craniomedial to the kidney here, you can see this very important structure is the adrenaline, um, adrenaline gland. Adrenaline gland is located, as we said, craniomedially to each kidney. Here, there, we have another one here. This is the adrenaline gland. Yeah? Let me just go like this. And this is the adrenaline gland. The right one, this is the right one, and this is the left one here. And this is the left one here, adrenaline gland. Good. Here from the halos of the of each kidney, we can see the ureter. This is the ureter, which collect, you know, the urine from the kidney and move uh, backward retroperitoneally here. This is the ureter here. And finally, it, uh, it goes to the urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder here. And here in this level here, we can see the ureter. I can't touch it here. This is the ureter. 
This is the ureter nook. How it moved toward the urinary bladder. The same on the other side, of course. So this is the right ureter, and we have, of course, the left ureter on the other side. But now we are going to cut uh, the kidney longitudinally, so to look at the internal structures of the kidney. Uh, okay, let me just cut it here. Just like this. Okay. We are through the kidney now. If you look exactly, uh, the first things we can see or we can uh, is the cortex. So this is here the renal cortex. This is the renal cortex. And here in the middle, we have the renal medulla. This is the medulla at the beginning here at the halos of the uh, kidney. We have what's called, uh, of course, this is the renal uh, halos. This one here, the entrance to the kidney. Here we have the renal uh, crest and the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis where, you know, the, the urine will be collected uh, through the duct system found inside the kidney up to the finally the renal pelvis and from the renal pelvis to the ureter. Well, the ureter will collect this uh, um, uh, urine and you know leave the uh, renal helos at this point here and move backward toward the urinary bladder so let me just show you the internal structures one more time again here we have the renal cortex the renal medulla and here we have the renal pelvis renal pelvis here as you can see we can see some of the arteries you know um, this one, for example, is one of the intra, um, inter interlobular artery, which will move in this direction toward the cortex. And finally, they will give the um, arcuate uh, arteries here. From them, we have a lot of small branches to the cortex. So here, if we move or follow the ureter, the ureter, as we said before, transport the urine from the kidney backward up to the urinary bladder. So this is the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is located normally inside the pelvic cavity, and it depends if the urinary bladder is completely filled. In this case, with urine, this scales part of the urinary bladder will move and are, is located in this case inside the abdominal cavity. The um, urinary bladder here has the body of the urinary bladder. This is the body of the urinary bladder. There we have the cervix or the neck, and um, the ureters, left and the right ureters, they enter the, the urinary bladder at this uh, level, here and there, here and there, okay. Uh, the urinary bladder is fixed in its position by um, three main ligaments and two accessory ligaments. Let's say in general, we have five ligaments to talk about uh, here once we talk about the urinary bladder. The first one which we can see here, uh, the, you, the, the middle ligament of the urinary bladder, this is the middle ligament of the urinary bladder, starts from the ventral surface of the urinary bladder up to the linea alba, and finally it moves toward the umbilicus, as you can see here. So here, it's very important to mention that, you know, the middle urinary bladder, uh, the middle uh, ligament of the urinary bladder move from the urinary bladder toward the linea alba. So this is the linea alpha, alba. If you remember, we cut, you know, and open the abdominal cavity exactly in the media uh, linea alba. And this, you know, ligament uh, moves finally toward the umbilicus. This is the first. We move the urinary bladder ba backward like this. We can see another two ligaments uh, from the lateral surface of the urinary bladder to the abdominal wall, to the lateral uh, uh, surface of the abdominal wall. Here we're talking about uh, the lateral uh, ligaments of the urinary bladder. So the lateral ligaments of the urinary bladder, they are bared. So we have left and right one here and there. 
they fix the urinary bladder to the lateral wall of the abdominal and of course uh, pelvic cavity as you can see here in the free end of this lateral ligament of the urinary bladder i hope it's clear let me show you this way here at the free end here we can see like this ligament here let me just try to show you this is the round ligament of the urinary bladder this is the round ligament of the urinary bladder it's uh, very thin white colored as you can see in this picture here found inside the lateral ligament of the urinary bladder this is one if we go to uh, to the other one let me try to find it there also this one here this one here yeah this this ligament here this one here is the round ligament of the urinary bladder or ligamentum teres visica ligamentum teres visica these two um, round ligaments um, represents actually the umbilical arteries before birth you know After pairs, of course, there is no function for this to ligament uh, arteries, and that's why they um, they will uh, be like as a ligament. Again, the round ligament of the urinary bladder. So this is the five ligaments. Again, the middle ligament of the urinary bladder. Here to the side, we have the lateral ligaments of the urinary bladder and inside the lateral ligaments of the urinary bladder we have the round ligament of the urinary bladder here and there of course this is uh, how the um, urinary bladder is fixed in its, its position finally there i will try to show you how the urinary bladder has at that level like a small neck and after that moves or continuous with what's called the urethra the urethra which moves you know finally inside the bins um, good here just as because we are here we will uh, look at these uh, two structures so there are two or one duct moves across the lateral ligament of the urinary bladder across the lateral ligament of the uh, urinary bladder this is what's called the vas deferens vas deferens or the different duct uh, if you follow this one, yeah, this is from the other side, you know, this one here and this one here. If you follow these ducts, you will find that this duct moves through the inguinal canal. Here we can see the internal opening of the in, uh, inguinal canal or the internal inguinal ring. And this duct moves through it and moves inside the inguinal canal up to the scrotum, up to the scrotum caudally.